Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes out us from Silver Spawn. It says uh, a request either a track two or three from uh, Kashiwa's new album. You can choose though. Track two is melody focused and gorgeous. You'd like it. Track 3 is a journey through a deep, dark forest into an exploding sun, and I can make no promises. So, I went with track 2. I like to uh, explore new things, but I'm in the mood for something that hopefully I'll enjoy over uh, a gamble. So, we're going to be checking out the track Ice from Kashua Daisuke's album, Ice that came out in 2024. When in 2024? July. Oh, so this is really recent. Very cool. Let's uh, dive into this and uh, see what they're bringing to the table today. This is gorgeous so far. Very intense drumming in that last section. Dance beat with the piano is already great. Violin's just icing on the cake though. <laughs> Introducing a little bit of tension at the last pa at the end of the last passage to move us into that uh, previous four bar phrase, which is darker. It's interesting, we have smooth transitions. I don't think we've abruptly changed anything where there was zero ties to the last part, but we've ha we have had these abrupt energy shifts.
like this idea of keeping this motif quiet and small on the piano and changing what happens around it. We had the drone and then the white noise and now the accompanying piano part. We're going to build from here, it seems like. It's a, a nice series of sections. <laughs> what? Random jazzy drumming? Ooh. Glitch rhythm? Oh. So effortless. Certainly going to take a few more times for me to get it though. I'm gonna expand on that thought when this is over. This is like the third time the song seems like it could be over, and yet there's still almost two minutes left, just shy of that. I do like that it seems it's going to end. 
in a place not too dissimilar from the beginning. All right, so I feel like a lot of what I'm going to say lines up with some things that I spoke about regarding um, their work last time we checked them out. I don't remember what song that was. It isn't one of their top, uh, actually, of their top 10 songs on Spotify right now, seven come from this album. This is uh, this is a popular pick right here. Oh, and they've had a recent single too. Uh, August 24. Oh. So like last week. Um, oh, program music. That's what it was. We checked out program music. Yeah. Um. And, and we'll get to that in a second, I suppose. Some of the things that uh, are going to overlap with what I, I praised about that one. But I want to start with a comment that I had made earlier uh, on this track. Was that it's going to take some time, uh, a few listens, to fully grasp what is going on. And I think a lot of that has to do with pacing and structure see I think it's wild every section as I mentioned flows into the next there is some idea that's persistent between them whether it's a bit of foreshadowing and we start an idea towards the end of a section that pulls us through a transition and is the, a core idea or a foundational idea of the next section. Maybe it's just an idea that never stops playing. We had that uh, piano motif around minute four and a half or so that we built the song around consistently changing what the, the song was doing, but we had this, this thread tying all of it together. I don't think there's any moment in here where one section just becomes another in the way that, say, metal music likes to do, where the drum patterns and the guitar riffs just abruptly stop doing the verse, for instance, and move into the chorus riff and the chorus drums. Um, and there's just a very harsh transition between those two. Everything in here is fluid on one level or another. There is a consistency of writing that pulls us through the entire album and, well, the entire track. And, uh, you know, there's there's a, probably a big part of the audience like, Brian, dude, isn't that what you like in music? Why are you complaining about it this time? <laughs> no, I, I do prefer smooth transitions. I, I like things to, to feel like they naturally evolve. It's what I tend to write in my own music as well. But that's not to say that there aren't harsh, abrupt changes in here. As I mentioned right before that piano solo came in, our volume, the intensity, the layering was maxed out. And while the piano melody was one of these layers, and then when the next layer comes in and it's pretty much just the piano, there's this transitional concept going on there. But we went from this full stack of sound down to practically nothing. There wasn't a, a decrescendo there or anything like that. It wasn't a smooth removal of ideas. It was, we were listening to this and now we're listening to this, even though there was still a, a concept that tied them together. 
And we actually see this all throughout this track, not just in layering or volume, but even in style. <laughs> Having that, uh, that jazzy drum idea come in high energy on top of this mellow piano that we had been listening to for about 30 or 40 seconds was a drastic shift in pace even as different ideas were being layered on top of it it was all in a way that felt congruent and, and natural based on using the piano as a starting point and that drum did not it felt very left field wild inclusion totally unexpected does it end up working yeah I think so, ultimately, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a, a very odd choice to go with. And so there's a lot of moments in this song where I kind of felt like I was being jerked around. Uh, a roller coaster, but instead of, you know, smooth movements, uh, it's, it's just like these 90 degree whip arounds, which would probably never work in a roller coaster, but whatever. The metaphor isn't perfect. Uh, but yeah, it, it was just... It never really felt like I could predict where we were going. And when we changed directions, it was very abrupt and sharp. Despite the fact that everything kind of works together. And I find this to be intriguing above all else. It is simultaneously fluid and jagged. And that is bonkers. I, I love it. It's, it's, it's wild, but it's also difficult to follow. And this is one element that I think would smooth itself over a bit on repeat listens. But the other is the sheer chaotic nature. And I kind of touched on this already. None of this really makes sense to me. Uh, I, I think it's, it's a masterclass in pairing so many disparate elements into stuff that is ultimately beautiful and listenable. But as I'm, as I'm listening to this and each new layer comes in, all I can think of is that shouldn't work. It, it kind of does, <laughs> but we paired jazz, we paired classical, we paired rock, we paired electronic, all of this in, in this song, utilizing such a wide amount of instruments. It is a, a masterclass. I think, in getting all of this to work well without losing the identity of any of them. The jazz drums don't feel softened up in any way. They're, they're not less energetic because they're paired with a, a quiet, meek piano line. They come out loud and, uh, and, and high intensity. Does it fit? Again, I, I don't know. It, it kind of worked, didn't it? <laughs> Should it have? No, I don't think so. But it, it kind of does. And so it almost feels uh, thrown together. A musical genre collage, maybe we can call it. it it's it's going to take some time to wrap my head around it. And this is what I said about program music as well. But program music seemed to jump around between ideas. We had uh, a classical section. We had a rock section. We had an electronic section. And they seemed mostly separated. The fact that it all sort of comes together in any sort of way that feels cohesive at all was interesting. But there weren't a lot of moments when we just threw everything together at once. And that's what he does here. And so it's, it's just a very eclectic sound. And I don't want that to sound negative. I greatly enjoyed my time with this, but I don't get it. I don't know why it works. It honestly shouldn't. But there are parts of me that found it a bit too chaotic, too. The last thing I think that makes it difficult to follow and I already said this is structure. What, what is the structure here? It's totally linear as far as I can tell. There's no repeated motifs. Uh, there's no callbacks. There's very little foreshadowing except for transitionary uh, usage. It's, it's all over the place. It's tough to follow. You have to just be along for the ride. And I, I was to a point... But it also feels awkward 
at times structurally. I mentioned there at the end, I think we were at the eight minute mark, and I said, you know, this is the fourth ending of the song, and yet there's still like two minutes left. What are we going to do now? The way that the song is structured, not necessarily uh, sections, but highs and lows, climaxes, rising action, peaks, valleys, it is this constant rising and falling. And it, it knows that. It doesn't really care. That's what it wants to do. And normally that'd be a good thing. But when you pair that with the constant changing of atmosphere, of genre, uh, of all of the ways that we've they're cramming so many different styles together. It often feels not like we have peaks and valleys, but the end of an idea and the reset of a song it just happens to carry over one idea from the previous section. And I think this is ultimately what makes those smoothish transitions feel ultra harsh to me, is that where we go tends to be very distant from where we came from. We did happen to take a road there. This might be a transitionary concept or, or a foundational thing, a chord progression maybe. But the two cities couldn't be further apart from each other uh, as far as culture and mannerisms and what's societally acceptable. They're just two very different things. And so it's tough to conceptualize this song as one cohesive idea it really isn't it's a lot of them with soft start and stop sections we don't change tracks we never really hit zero volume but we do enter a brand new idea it feels more like uh what was an album we checked out recently where almost every track went into the next one but it was like a totally different style. Like most of it was rock, I think. But then we would have like these little 10 second electronic interludes just to tie the tracks together. So there was no moment of dead silence. But they really felt different than the rest of the album. An added part, something to just make, to fill noise or to fill space. That kind of concept where all the tracks are definitely isolated ideas but there just doesn't happen to be a break within the song within the album that's sort of what this feels like i don't really feel this as a 10 minute track there's too many disparate ideas in it it's five unique ideas that are all very cool on their own but i have no idea how it all works together and the transitions are kind of filler at times there are some transitions that I think work really well, but they don't really do much to tie us where we came from, and they don't really direct us where we're going too well. It's a way to fill the sound so that we don't have a dead silence between these different movements of the song. It's it's neat. Uh, and it sounds like something that I, I would love to try to do. In fact, I'm sure if I go through my notes, there's probably something in there of make a bunch of disparate songs, but make sure there's no silence between them or something like that. It's definitely something I've envisioned myself doing at one point in time, but I don't know. It just, it, it feels rough on a first time listen. And so part of me walking away from this song doesn't really think it works. From a bird's eye view, it's kind of a mess. Fortunately, though, that's such a small part of my experience with it. See, the rest of the song, though, looking at each individual moment, zooming that that lens in closer and looking at the individual moments. This is absolutely fantastic. There were so many times that my jaw was on the floor, that my mind was blown with things that shouldn't work together, but absolutely do, and not just work together fine, but work together in a way that benefits both sides of the song. 
chord progressions that went in very unique directions and ultimately sounded fantastic melodies that swept me right off my feet uh, introducing glitch in places to augment the rhythmic uncertainty of it something that they probably could have done with acoustic sounds but maybe not necessarily to that extent and really wanting to exaggerate it and it ends up sounding phenomenal uh i probably had a big dumb goofy grin on my face this entire time just because moment to moment there's so many great ideas in here not to mention that on the sheer compositional level Kashima Daisuke is just a genius. His melodic writing, his harmonic writing, uh, rhythmic counterpoint, uh, harmonic counterpoint, or melodic counterpoint, whatever. Um, it's just, the music is all so densely intertwined. All of the instruments working together to create something beautiful or wonderful or heavy or obtuse. Whatever the goal was, that moment absolutely delivers i don't think there's a single moment in here where i thought to myself well the intention's probably there but the execution leaves me wanting a little no i think every single thing was executed on perfectly and to realize that these moments are the combinations of several different sounds and timbres and styles and compositional ideas where I can feel where they come from. Oh, the drum is definitely jazzy here, but the strings are a bit classical and there's a guitar here that's given us these uh, electronic distorted chords. There's some rock stuff and like I can hear the individual components, but also feel how they work together. It comes... It adds up in a way that's just wonderful and inspirational. It's kind of daunting to listen to this. It is what I've sort of been trying to do for the past couple of years, getting back into music and trying to take my classical and jazz uh, origins and merge them with the love that I've grown for metal and harder rock sounds. And y'all have introduced me to some cool electronica uh, and electronic music. And I have purchased electronic libraries, sound libraries, that I never would have bought or even tinkered with before starting this channel. And I've wanted to pair all this together in a way that is... is congruent where you can hear all the inspirations but it works together and I've never quite reached that point I think I've been on the cusp of it at times but it's it's tough and I listen to this and I'm like this is what I wish I could do and there's a part of me that's a bit daunting it's like wow why should I even continue on but also there's an inspirational part to it this is possible and it's possible to do it in a way that isn't, uh, you know, experimental music where it's good for being weird. No, this is legitimately good music. Very palatable, very listenable, and absolutely gorgeous from start to finish. And so there is a lot of confusion for me on this track. I, I don't know that I enjoy the, the the whole concept of it but like i said that might be something that improves over time but moment to moment it's just so perfectly done it really is and it makes me want to go back for those repeat listens to become more familiar with it to unlock its secrets and figure out what it's trying to say which you know it's usually where I go from here, especially on instrumental tracks. What is it saying? What's the narrative? What does it have to do possibly with the title of the track? In this case, I don't know. I have such a weak grasp on the overarching idea here. It's, like I said, feels very cacophonous to me. It's a series of ideas disparate. From each other i don't really see what the message is as a whole so it's tough for me to pair that back to the concept of ice even more so knowing that this is the title track of the album 
it does make me a little worried that maybe the rest of the album is just as chaotically disparate as this track is, but I am going to have to add this to my list. I wish I had known about this. Well, actually, I didn't, so, you know, this could be an authentic reaction, but I also didn't know he had an album come out this year, and uh, that's changed. I'm going to have to add that to my list, which I'm catching up on. I think I'm only five albums backlogged now, which is pretty good. Especially since some good stuff came out uh, last week on Friday. So, all right. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Kashio Daisuke's Ice from the Ice album. Let me know what you thought of this track. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on, maybe you just have your own interpretation of things. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find a link to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.